Hello, it's Jennifer. Today is Monday, October 22nd, and I'm out in the yard prepping a bed uh, to be planted uh, for fall and winter garden. Um, here in Southern California, it's still quite warm, so it gets into the high 90s in the daytime still, and overnight it's into the mid 50s maybe. I think last night was in the 60s. So basically looking at some of the longer term weather forecasts, it looks like we're going to be having a mild winter this year. Despite that, I'm going to try to plant some lettuce, broccoli, and cabbage. See how that goes. So I've been using heat tolerant varieties, which you know, have been working. And so I'm going to try some of the newer heat tolerant varieties this year, as well as some that grew for me last year. So right now I'm picking out the big pieces of mulch that I put in here over the summer and I'll fill the bed up with um, uh, min excuse me <laughs> with composted uh, cow manure and then I'll go ahead and put the um, mulch topping back on but as you can see here um, last year's garden ate quite a bit of soil so <laughs> I need to replace oh about six inches of it and that's what I've got going on back here so it's a few days later. It's uh, October 24th now. I had a really bad gopher attack uh, over the past two or three days. Basically, they ate a hole through the um, large grow bag that was here. I've since replaced it with this tub for now that has a watermelon in it. Um, the gopher ate all of my um, maturing onions. It left me some of these little juvenile onions so I'll go ahead separate these and replant them into another bed. I have another bed here that we're worried about. We don't know whether the gophers have eaten through it yet because the bag is heavy but um, we have some traps out and hopefully we'll be able to catch this gopher uh, or gophers and they won't eat this crop of onions as well. Um, these are supposed to be ready in March, the March time frames, early spring. We'll see. Um, today, I also transplanted my some of my beans. Not all of them are ready yet. So I started them indoors because I have a pill bug problem. And the pill bugs will eat the seed leaves um, as soon as they pop out the ground and then the plant's dead. So I went ahead and let them sprout two big healthy leaves. Uh, I hope that this is enough because they're basically already too big to keep in the house after about a week of them growing inside. So that's an update for today. So this is a second round tomato plant I grew. Um, it looks like it's miniaturizing so it's I'm not going to really get anything out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it down today and then check the roots to see if um, I've got a nematode problem and what that'll show up is is nodules on the roots. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get this down and then we'll, then I'll check uh, the roots. So here are the roots. The roots look totally normal. So I don't know what's wrong with the plant. Maybe it's just that it's getting cold at night. I, I have no idea. But anyhow, here are the roots. And now to look at these other tomato plants which are dying. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and pull these up because they haven't been productive and they aren't flowering. So here's another tomato plant from that same bed, and this tomato plant does indicate that it, there's a nematode problem in the soil. So you can see these nodules here on the roots, and those are points of irritation for the plant. And what happens when these nodules form is that the roots become unable to take up uh, as much nutrients as they should, and so your plant gets stunted, weird looking, and doesn't produce any fruits. So um, the solution I found that works is to mix in shrimp meal into the soil and then um, wait a few months before planting tomatoes again. So you know you can plant other things in the soil while you know the shrimp meal is doing its thing but don't plant any tomatoes because the same thing will happen and you'll just end up with more stunted plants. This is the shrimp meal that I buy. Um, I can't find it locally at any of my 
a big box stores or my local nursery so I order it from Amazon anyhow you just sprinkle some of it on the um, soil mix it in and then what I found is about three months later I can go ahead and plant tomatoes in the dirt so basically the shrimp meal attracts um, microbes and uh, other bugs that eat the um, the nematodes so um, after you know it takes them a little while to get started but I found that this is effective I used it on my garden patch on the, over here last year and the tomatoes grew in just fine none of the miniaturization so um, I recommend this as a cheaper method to get rid of the nematodes there's also spray but that spray is super expensive like fifty dollars for some a bottle of concentrate so <laughs> this is more around ten dollars so I chose to go with this route hello it's Jennifer today is Tuesday October 30th and today I'm planting peas so just a word about this video I've been constructing this video over the course of two weeks so some of the parts are going to seem pretty just disjointed um, because I've just been recording randomly what I've been doing in the yard. So anyhow, let's continue on with the peas. So this is a converted tomato bed. I went ahead and put in some bamboo poles for the peas to vine up. Um, I use bamboo because I've seen in the past that plants prefer to climb natural things like wood instead of metal and plastic. So I've gone ahead and used all the bamboo poles I have to create this sort of, I guess, pea jail. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna plant um, both vining peas and then this setup over here are for some bush peas that I've never had before, but we're gonna try. This year I've decided to plant more shelling types than um, the type that you can eat whole. So guess more shelling peas versus um, more of the snow peas. Um, what I found is last season, my husband and I ate a lot more of the peas out of the shell than in the shell. And um, a lot of those peas that say that they are snap peas or whatnot um, were actually pretty fibrous and hard to chew on. So it's much easier, although I hate shelling peas, to just get a whole handful of peas and throw them in something and hide the peas. So we get some vegetables every once in a while without it being too apparent that I've just fed you a bunch of peas. <laughs> so anyhow, um, I prepared the bed with um, the soil that was already in there, some soil that I recovered from these tomato planters over here. So I used those to, for tomatoes earlier this uh, year. And then uh, some steer manure compost. And so the bed's all ready for the peas. So I'll go ahead and place the peas on the bed. So this season I've decided to grow the Oregon Sugar Pod 2 Snow Pea. This is a bush pea. The Oregon Giant. The Oregon Sugar Pod. Wando, which is a very dependable um, shelling pea. And super snappy, which turned out to be very impressive last year. So you get a lot of peas per pod as shown in this image. Um, so I highly recommend these actually. And supposedly they can be eaten as a snap pea, but um, I found them to be too fibrous to use a snap pea. But as a shelling pea, uh, it's really good. And before I submerge the peas, I like to put them all up on the ground like this so I can see where they are. And then I'll just take my finger and poke them into the dirt about an inch or two. So somewhere between an inch and two inches. And then probably in about a week, the first sprout should be coming up. Usually I like to soak the seeds overnight <laughs> when I actually think about it and prepare, but this time I didn't, so it might take a couple days extra for these to come up out of the dirt. And here's the pea bed all planted out. And I also put in the um, drip irrigation here, as you can see on the ground. 
are some other plants that I've been planting over the past couple weeks. This is my lettuce bed. And there's still some more lettuce inside that needs to go out, but they're too small. And I put these out as a test to see whether the pillow bugs were going to be aggressive and eat the lettuce before it even gets to start. But so far it looks like the pill bugs have left it alone. There's plenty of other stuff in the soil for them to eat. So my understanding is that they prefer to eat decaying stuff before they go after the um, living. So there's plenty of dead stuff in here, as you can see. This is the other onion bed. Um, fortunately, we killed the gopher that destroyed our other onion bed that used to be over there. So hopefully these guys will live long enough to actually bulb and provide onions. And then over here uh, is mostly beans. And then these are some tomatoes that were left over from summer. And they're growing nicely. They started flowering again. So hopefully we'll get some tomatoes this winter. But um, I've got a variety of beans here. The rock door, which is, I believe that's a yellow bean. The royal purple, which is of course purple. Um, what's this here? It's royal purple. Cannellini beans. These are pull beans. The rest of them are bush beans. Roma beans. And contender back there. So these are all started indoors because, again, I have aggressive pill bugs. And it's not recommended that you start beans inside, but I can tell you that if you put them in a big seed pellet, the beans will do just fine. It's just that they get so big so fast that you can't keep them under indoor grow lights for very long. So here they are. They're doing quite well. Over here I've got some spinach seedlings and then down there is the pixie cabbage. And here are some pepper plants that are still holding on from the summer. Some nice fat jalapenos over there. And lastly the broccoli and cauliflower bed. So far I've only got broccoli in here. Cauliflower actually takes a little bit longer to grow, so they'll be out here probably the next week. Um, <laughs> I was cleaning out my other bed, so the mulch that was on there went over here temporarily, but I'll move that all back once I get this dirt all mixed in. I'm running out of daylight and energy, so I will deal with this tomorrow. And that's all for today.